Hey friend, I'm Tiffany Harlick and my channel offers astrology for spiritual development students. And so today we're going to talk about the debate between the vice presidential candidates and what's going on in the skies and the stars. Um, for a little bit of background, if you're new to my channel, I practice Western evolutionary astrology. I have Jewish lineage and heritage in my family. I am Christian. I believe in one God that made heaven and earth and that has a plan for your life. And so astrology brings order to chaos. It, it shows us the different seasons of life. This is just my take through my lens. There are many astrologers out there. I appreciate you coming to my channel for um, some insight. And so let's take a look. Let me go ahead and share my screen. And let's take a look at the charts. Perfect. So here we are. Welcome back. If you're uh, coming back, if you're new, please hit subscribe if you'd like more of this content. Uh, what we're going to talk about is Vance and the Eclipse, Waltz and the Eclipse, the debate itself, and the election forecast. This is a short, hot take, so come up with your own conclusions, of course, but here's what I'm seeing. So here's J.D. Vance, his inner wheel, here's his chart on the inner wheel, and the eclipse on the outer wheel. Um, I am going to look at the forecast chart with us, with you guys. But for now, let's take a look at what's going on with the eclipse in his chart. So transiting Uranus, of course, has just crossed over Algol, which is the uh, beheading star, right? This is a, a star that indicates that off with their heads, that fierceness, um, that like no holds barred um, star, that energy. And similar to President Trump, Uranus is going through his 10th house, right? And this is the house of career, the house of reputation, the house of public standing, uh, what the world needs from us. It, um, the Midheaven shows our, our spiritual mission in some ways and how our purpose unfolds slowly over time. Uh, now, Uranus in the sky here at 26 is going to be squaring his natal Venus in the 12th house. And that's a really challenging placement. The 12th house is the house of secrets. Uh, Venus indicates, you know, some of the things that we love the most in life, our love language, the things that we hold dear and near to our hearts, um, the things that we might not want out there in the public uh, eye. And so I wouldn't be surprised if there were some kind of secrets or surprises that get stirred up for him around this time. Um, I'm looking at the eclipse because it's so close to the debate, but also just know that your eclipse moment can happen up to 90 days before the actual eclipse date. So if you want some training on eclipses, I would love to help you and support you with that and check out some of my other videos. But yeah, that's the first kind of thing that really stands out to me. And because Uranus is right here, it's in a square position or it's nearing a square position to his first house, his ascendant, right? And so I do think that we are going to see more of him in the spotlight, more of him in the media. Uh, he will just be more present, more prominent. Um, and I think that that can play out in a lot of different ways. So we look at transiting Saturn going through his seventh house, the house of open enemies. Um, Saturn in Pisces, you know, Pisces is a water sign. Um, it is more ethereal. It is softer. Um, I don't, I feel like he will not perceive his opponents as a threat. That's how I'll say that. Okay. And this activates, this Saturn right here in Pisces activates the uh, a water grand trine. So we're looking at Saturn and 14 Pisces. Uh, Mars in 15 Cancer, and then Venus in 11 Scorpio, right? And so we're talking about, yes, this house of open enemies, and will he perceive his enemy or opponent as a threat? Probably not. Um, and then we've got Venus, well, let me not skip ahead. Yeah, okay, that's where I went next. Venus in Scorpio conjunct his natal Saturn in his third house of communication and effective communication. And so Venus in Scorpio is very calculated. Um, there's no mistakes with what he's saying. So um, I feel like there will be absolutely calculated messaging that will put him um, in a place of authority. I think he's going to be feeling his uh, strength here with Venus and Saturn in his third house in Scorpio, right? Very calculated, very determined, very fixed, eye on the prize, not easily swayed, not easily provoked. Um, that Scorpio nature to really go deep um, there could be a tendency to go below the belt in some ways, you know, I don't know. So I, I also wanted to point out that Vance has his natal uh, Mercury over here in the first house in seven degrees of Virgo. Okay, Virgo is an earth sign. 
Um, it is practical. It is honest. It is data driven, right? And so it's. I wanted to point that out because also in combination with his with the North Node and Chiron over here in Gemini in his tenth house, you know, Gemini is the wordsmith, the one that is here to deliver information, to offer an exchange of information. Chiron is our deepest wounds, you know, in some ways, um, the the wounded. Um, the, the wounds that we have to personally overcome are we get that special medicine bag for those particular wounds. And then we use those tools that we have learned for ourselves to go help other people with our same wound. And so a wound around words is something that he's karmically tied to, uh, whether it's words that he says or words that have been said to him or about him. Um, the theme is like words that wound. And then, um, using that as part of his career or part of what the world needs from him, uh, doing multiple bodies of work. We saw him with Hillbilly Elegy. I don't think it's going to be the only book or um, movie that he's ever involved in. And I think this will be interesting to watch over time because this is a huge part of his chart to, to share information, especially about like that gritty side of life um, and to bring kind of the shadow side into the light, really. All right, transiting Mercury conjunct his Libra moon. Let's look for that. So transiting Mercury is in 11 degrees of Libra. So it's, it's kind of a wide orb there, but it's getting closer to his 19 degree Libra moon. And towards that end, Mercury and um, Mercury and the moon working together, there's flow, there's the ease of communication, there's reliability, there's fairness, there's justice, there's looking at things from both sides. Um, there's the ability to see things from a dry point of view without the heat, without the emotion. Uh, Mercury, I mean, Libra is the only sign in the zodiac that's neither um, man, I was going to say plants, <laughs> neither man nor animal. So Libra is the scales. It's the scales of justice. There can be a dryness and a detached uh, effort to mediate or see both sides of things. Um, yeah, less danger, big reactions, and reason prevails. So I also see transiting Venus right next to his Saturn here, 11 degrees of Scorpio, 10 degrees of Scorpio. Um, we were talking about that earlier with the trine, uh, the grand trine. Um, I think that this combined with Saturn trining his natal Saturn is going to show, he's going to show up at, as somebody that's very committed, that has a, a hard work ethic, that is willing to stay the course. I think that is going to shine through um, during the debate here. And I just wanted to note that he's going through his Neptune and Pluto squares. And so he's really emerging a new person, a different person. Um, than he was before. And so you can even see that with his work and his writing, right? That he's uh, separated or distanced himself from that which he grew up with and uh, made good of it, right? Made something new of it, regenerated, um, tried to overcome a situation and share that um, faith, I guess, in humanity with others, right? Okay. So Walt's in the eclipse. Let's look at this. Um, in Walt's natal chart, he has a mutable T-square going on uh, with Venus at the apex. Okay, so here's Venus in two degrees of Gemini. Uh, we've got over here Uranus in six degrees of Virgo. And then we've got Saturn in one degree of Pisces. Uh, okay, so we've got this mutable T-square going on between Saturn, Venus, and Uranus with Venus in the apex in the 11th house, right? Which rules uh, groups of people, the, the network, um, the collective consciousness, the future. It rules tech, it rules forward thinking, um, advancements with our dreams, okay? And so for, for this position, for Venus to be here, you can see how there would be support of female leadership. Um, there would be support of going with the flow. So uh, there's like, he's in a, a He's in a good place with his chart to be in a supportive role, I'll say. Um, the transiting north node, what am I looking at? Hmm. Yeah, they're transiting north node. Conjunct is Mars. That's an interesting and powerful placement. Um, the north node shows us a point of fate, a point of destiny, something that we're reaching for. And that really drives some of us crazy, right? That we always have to be striving for something. You don't always have to be striving for something. So I encourage you to reinvent how you are working with the North Node. However, uh, it represents the head of the dragon that is eating and chewing and digesting and uh, swallowing, right? The South Node is the tail of the dragon that is eliminating, 
um, things that we need to let go of, the North Node, things that we're embracing and, and moving forward with. And so with that placement conjunct to natal Mars there, right there in the end of the ninth house, I feel like it's a very faded position that this is part of his life journey, that this is going to be a remarkable evening for him, uh, something to be proud of, something that he um, will just feel like that he's on mission, that he's on his spiritual mission, that he's on his purpose. Um, now, that said, transiting Mars over here in 15 um, Cancer is going to be squaring his natal sun, right? And so I'm curious, will we see more fanfare or will he be more bombastic or will he be out of character in some way um, in terms of coming across as more challenging or combative or argumentative than we normally see? I don't know. It, it's curious to me. Transiting Saturn is conjunct as Chiron. So Saturn shows us a place of uh, authority and leadership and career and what we need to be disciplined with. Um, and it's it's really close to his natal Chiron there in Pisces. And so will there be a group of people who feel severely wounded, who feel victimized, who feel martyred? Will there be a group of people who will look to him for leadership here in, in the department in which they feel their wounds are being addressed? Will he speak to those um, wounds so specifically that it will uh, cause a wave of emotion, right? All right. Uh, and I also am just curious with all this this uh, this action over here, will there be some kind of announcement going on? Now, I said publishing, we have to scrap that because we don't have his time. We don't have his birth time. Um, there have been some people that have tried to rectify his chart. I don't know how you could do that without interviewing him in depth. And so this is the 12 o'clock you know, time period is what everybody is using. That's what I was using. And so ignore this part about publishing because we can't look at the houses in this situation. Um, yeah. So the transiting Pluto, again, I that's an error. I apologize. We don't know where it is because we don't have his exact time of birth. And I, I was making my notes quickly before coffee. So the debate, here's what's going on. Um, with the de the debate, it's so late. Why do they do them so late? I don't know. But the sun and Mercury are next to each other in the sky. So I feel like there will be precise, effective communication. I feel like it's going to be a more enjoyable debate to watch because I feel like there will actually be um, exchanges of information with sound bites that we can hear with less of the over talking or muting or all of the kind of antagonistic features that we've seen previously. And so I do feel like somewhat hopeful that there will be more effective communication that we will hear those bullet points that that we want to hear and get our questions answered. Um, the sun is squaring Mars. So will there be some pushy moments? Yeah. Will there be some aggressive moments? Yeah, I think so. Um, now, we have to keep in mind that this Pluto-Uranus trine going on in the skies, there is a push for change. There is a pu push for the future. And so I want, I guess I would ask you, what, what does change really mean, right? A change from what? A change towards what? And what does that mean for you? What's important for you? And I also want, want to uh, just remind us, like, there's a lot of news going on over there in Israel. And so to not get so hyper-focused on this one little conversation in the grand scheme of uh, world events, so I have a few slides that I'm going to briefly go through that are about the eclipse um, and Mars retrograde here at the end of 2024 during this election. These slides are from an event that I do with Celeste Brooks and Sarah El Harar every year. We do a uh, forecast event. And so I took three slides from that event from 2024. We're doing it again in 2020 or well, in 2024 for 2025. So our 2025 prediction event is on 11-11, November 11th. And so save the date, buy your tickets. They're $33. We each get 11 bucks. <laughs> so thank you for supporting our work. And it's totally worth it. I Our predictions this year are really, uh, I think that we have fine-tuned our approach. And I'm so excited to show the slides to you guys. Uh, but I just wanted to honor that these next slides are from our prediction event. Okay, so this new moon solar eclipse is at 10 degrees of Libra. 
Um, one thing that I really want to point out is that this eclipse is, is conjunct right next to fixed star diadem, which means braid, and black moon Lilith. So this is very taboo. This is weaving something taboo into the um, chemistry of this eclipse. Um, yes, Venus is in Scorpio in fall and besieged between Mars and Saturn, October 4 through 8. This is a challenging moment, guys. Right now, we're entering this challenging moment during this vice presidential debate. Um, I want to point out that this new moon eclipse, it starts off a new 27-month cycle here. So it starts out here, October 2nd, nine months later, we'll get the first quarter moon in Libra. This is when it's time to take action. So we will see some news for sure. Whatever we're talking about in the debate now, in October of 2024, we're going to see some uh, more information here in July of 2025 and again in April of 2026 when the full moon will be in Libra and this series this lunar family uh, cycle will close out in December of 2026 so uh, very interesting right that it's in Libra the two parties okay we uh, mentioned in our uh, forecast that the 2024 Mars retrograde will also influence this um, election heavily um, so Mars retrograde is actually December 6th until January. It starts at six degrees of Leo. This is interesting because that is the North Node of the United States, which falls in the eighth house of shared resources, right, of uh, how we work together, our land, things like this. Um, the eighth house rules sex, death, and taxes. And so will we see some changes to uh, the way that we operate our taxes? And um, why I said what's going on with Israel, I feel like, you know, there can be some smoke screens going on when we're watching big media. And so I'm curious what will be happening over in Israel uh, the last quarter of the year. Um, so a couple of more notes for you here. <clears throat> Election day happens when Mars is at zero degrees of Leo. This is an interesting placement for both uh, Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. So, uh, well, yeah, let's let's see more will be revealed. Lastly, one of the things that we predicted with Pluto and Aquarius is this is a time when traditionally women had leadership or there were more there was a more fair equality push with women in communities. And so we we talked about this in the 2024 predictions. Now, um I wrote this one, so let me take uh, not credit, but responsibility for it, because while I do think that the United States will see their first female president during a Pluto and Aquarius time, I don't think it's right now. Um, and I have a lot of reasons for that, but I'm just I wanted to take responsibility and share that part. OK. All right. So that is just a quick casual look at the. Uh, candidates for what the talk will be, the debate will be tonight. Uh, I hope this has been insightful and useful for you. Uh, I welcome your comments. Uh, I am not perfect, I uh, but I do, you know, try to offer just a very neutral approach to looking at the astrology and just pointing out the things that I think are interesting. So again, you know, uh, our higher power has a plan. Um, this has already been decided in the stars. This has already been faded. And so, you know, there's no sense in worrying. There's no sense in being afraid. There's no sense in trying to predict exactly how it's going to go down. Um, astrology brings us comfort through the order and the natural cycles and the natural seasons of life. It helps us to see other people, you know, not as opponents or enemies, but as as children of God, you know, that we all are. And so I hope that this helps you see other people in a way that um, it's like, wow, you know, it's a loving way, right? It's a loving way to look at other people is through the lens of astrology. All right, guys, I'm Tiffany. Thanks for being here. And uh, I look forward to seeing what you have to say in the comments. Namaste.